So, OnlyGames.co are a miniatures printing service. What that means is they take all those beautiful STLs out there and make them a reality for those who don't have or don't want to fuss with a 3D printer. They've got a massive catalog from a whole whack of independent creators, and they've sent me two miniatures to open up and check out. I got them to send me the same two miniatures for both though, because they also do full color printing. So I want to compare what I can paint easily with what they can print. So let's see what's inside. So to start with, we've got the standard packaging stuff. A nice box that kind of opens up all on its own in a really fancy way. Inside, whatever's in here was packed in some paper to make sure it didn't shift around too much in the post. The models themselves come in a clamshell packaging, which is pretty standard for single figures. It has a little bit of a tab at the top though, which I've not seen much, but is a nice added detail for getting them open. I'm not sure how units or larger models might come packaged, but so far, this is all pretty standard. This paper backing is standard too, but from what I've been told, it's actually really customizable, so that vendors or even game designers can add their own branding to these. If it were me, and these were for a game, I think it would be a great place to add rules for the models, or even just some lore about them, depending on how customizable they are per miniature or if it's like a one branding per store kind of thing. The actual clamshell is filled with straw to make sure the mini isn't moving around in transit, so I found it was best just to remove the whole thing and slowly unravel it until the miniature could be safely pulled away. And here it is, the full color resin mini. I pushed on the edge of his cloak here just to see how sturdy the resin is. When it comes to the stuff I use in my 3D printer, this does seem a little bit more tough and not as fragile. Overall, there doesn't seem to be any residue from the printing process, so these are cleaned pretty well from whatever process it is they go through to get the color. There is a little bit of a bend in the sword, which I'll see if I can work it out and make straight a little later on. There is some kind of thickness going on on the back of his cloak, but this is something I wanted to test anyway, to see just how far the color goes. So I scrape some of it off with my knife successfully, but on some of it, the gash left by the knife does make it white. I don't think the color is gone, just that I have to get rid of that line somehow. For the gray resin mini, once again I test the structural integrity of the resin, just to see where it is on the snappability scale. I think as far as resins go, this one seems pretty tough, though not indestructible. Were it to snap though, I feel like it'd be a clean break and easily repairable. Like the color mini, there's also no residue left over from the printing process, which is good because that means in this case, I don't think any additional washing will be needed before giving it a priming, saving some time over a cast figure. However, like a cast model, it's going to need some cleanup. Cast models usually have mold lines, which this one somehow found a way to make one of its layers a mold line. I'm sure that's just a one-off though and not common. But what will be common are the support studs. Whether printing at home or buying a print like this, it's just the fact of 3D printing that we're going to have to deal with these. I'm really impressed by the color detail in the color print. I was expecting just some full colors, more like an action figure you get off the shelf at a toy store, but this actually has shading and texture. The cloak especially looks like something right from a painted model. That said, there's one thing I'm finding really weird, and that's just how shiny it is. I'm sure it has something to do with the process to make it, but I'm curious if it's possible to matte or if that might ruin it somehow. So that's something I'm going to test in a little bit as well. The gray model is a pretty solid print overall. I don't see many layer lines, just a few on the back of the cloak, but some of the fuzziness you might be spotting on the cloth is actually part of the sculpt. So is in no way a fault since it's supposed to be there and speaks to how detailed their microns can get to. The one thing that might be a bit of a factor is that these do not come with their own bases, which is clearly labeled on the website before getting them, but that does mean you'll either want to order some as well, or make sure you have your own to work with. The irony of this being a mystery box means that I didn't know what I was being sent. I only knew that I'd get a color and a gray version of the same thing, but as fate would have it, 
I'm already a huge one page rule supporter. Cue the logo. This is actually a model I've printed and painted myself already. So we can do a painted color comparison a bit earlier in this video than expected. But I worked pretty hard on this one. So what I want to also do is paint up the gray one in the same colors as the color version in a sort of speed painting method and see how they compare. I want to experiment a bit on the color resin model because I'm curious about a few things, starting with if I can file it. This is one of the main ways I get rid of bumps and mold lines on models, and this seems to have a little bit of schmaltz in a few places, so I want to see if I can get it off with the file. At first it looks like it's going to remove all the color as I file at the surface, not because I think the color isn't there, but that because it leaves an opaque surface abrasion. When I add water though, it hides all those abrasions and lets me see the color under it. So I know that filing actually works to get rid of things that might be bothering me on the model, but it's going to take some kind of varnish to get rid of the surface abrasions, so we'll see if that works in a little bit. I've got some boiling Canadian water here, perfect for double doubles and bending PVC miniatures back into place, but I want to see if it also works on the resin. His sword is a little bent here and I want to straighten it out. So a nice dip into the hot cup of A2O for about 8 seconds. The resin or plastic being used is actually quite malleable, and you can see I can actually start twisting his arm a bit if I'm not careful, but the bend in the sword comes right out, so this works beautifully. Last thing I want to test is a matte varnish. Now I'm well aware this could ruin the model completely, but this is for science! So my favorite matte varnish into the airbrush, and no holding back. Coating this coffin king in copious amounts of a dull covering. And what I thought would happen, did happen. He became a bit frosty on the colors. I kind of figured the outer surface of the model would act more like a window to the color than the color itself, which is why it diffuses these colors out and makes them look frosty. So one more test I think. I'm going to give it a satin varnish this time, since that tends to be the half yin to the mat's yang. It should make it a little less frosty, but sacrifice some of the finish and give it a bit of a shine. At the very least, this non-paint paint job is going to be well protected, probably more than some of my actual painted miniatures. And when it was all dry, the colors were a bit more clear and vibrant, so it worked, but now it does have a bit of that shine back again, though I don't think as much as it had originally, and at least it's more evenly shiny. And the one thing to remember is these are for gaming, which would be the whole point of getting color resin. So it's going to be seen on the tabletop, where a lot of this won't matter. Normally on my channel, I paint things. So I want to get this guy done to a tabletop standard, using a method that's similar to a method whose name I'd really rather not say because I hate the name that it's been given. And besides, I do it a little differently anyway. I'll start from the start though, and give the king here a prime in dark gray, starting with a bit of a tack coat to help the primer itself to stick. I tend not to do full black primes, simply because a bit of white in the mix is going to help with the opacity for some of the other colors. The reason that's important is because I'm going to start with a base coat for the model overall. I'll give the head a dark green made with green and black. Then I'll use some yellow in that mix for his bones and bandages. Some brown and black are then combined to give me the base for his cloth parts, including the cape and sword leather. And then without the black, I'll use the same opaque brown to cover where all the yellow will be. Then the sword itself is just done in a gray mixed with a bit of blue and black to get that dark bluish silver tint. Now comes time for the zenithal but I like to take things really low and slow when it comes to going over color base coats like this, which is why I'm adding about three drops of my medium to the airbrush, but only a brush tip of the white paint. It'll be so dilute that it'll take a few layers to build up a nice frosty white layer, but that means those colors also come through, and I don't get any speckling, just a nice smooth transition to white. Now for the quick and easy part. All it takes is some contrast, speed paint, instant colors, ink, or even homemade washes. I happen to have these dipping inks from Green Stuff World, so that's what I'm going to use. And I've just color matched as best I can based on the colors of the plastic model. 
Starting with a dark neutral brown for the inside most cloth layers. This one isn't as dark as I'd like it, it seems, but that's fine. I can always go over it another time or more until I get the darkness I desire. For the kilt, I've chosen a more reddish brown, so still dark and brown, but with that orange hue to it. For the bones and wraps, I started with a green underlayer because the one I'm putting on top is more of a yellowish brown. By having the green, I can keep some of the green tint in the shadows while the wash deals with the bone and wrap color. The green is actually going to end up more like a glaze than a wash for how careful I have to get it in around the cowl, but just a bit of dark green should do it. Red is the color that should have the least issue with matching since as long as it's a warm red, it should be close. And red is usually pretty transparent, so all that brown in the cloak should show through while the white makes sure those higher folds are vibrant. This is another one of those that I do two coats with as well, just so the red is saturated and not too pink in those highlights. Yellow is much of the same idea, easy to pick out of the color pool and should become nice and vibrant over the white. Unlike the red though, it might have a bit more staining potential, so might not need the second layer if it stained the white the first go around. Last color is for the sword, and it'll be a dark desaturated green, but when I apply it to the model, I'm going to pull it away from the center of the blade and let it pool along either side instead. This way I retain the ping of light in the middle. The other thing I get to do that I couldn't do on my color resin version is I can actually give this guy a proper ultra matte finish. So is the quality there? Absolutely. And it comes in two important ways. I'm not so naive that I wouldn't understand that even when it's easy, painting's not for everyone. So the detail and vibrancy of the full color resin could be a huge boon for people who just want to play games and not worry about painting. Same goes for the artists who love to paint, but might not be willing to pick up a 3D printer of their own. The gray resin feels like any other miniature you get from a clamshell pack, so the experience will be familiar including the cleaning and the prep work. Except in this case, you'll have over 10,000 miniatures from independent artists to pick from at a price that I feel is better or at least comparable depending on size as the top tabletop companies currently. To me, a service like this bridges that gap that has existed for a little while between STL and physical miniatures. Those without printers feel like all the cool renders they were seeing on my mini factory were out of reach something only those with printers got to paint. But that's not the case anymore. All the cool things are out there waiting to be discovered, shipped out, and painted by you. And that sly little setup just leads me to the fact that I've got a link in the description to help out with that. 15% off anything in their catalog using either the promo code or the link found down there. I think it'll also be important to remember, and I'm quite happy that they're very open about this, that Only Games only takes 10% of any revenue and the rest goes to the creators. So by purchasing from Only Games, it's directly benefiting the creators of the STLs and sculpts. Please subscribe if you like this video and check the link in the description to my Discord where I talk all sorts of nonsense about miniatures painting, provide critique on paint jobs, and occasionally stream.